All right. How many of you are excited that we got to watch a little bit of college football this week? Anybody? <laughs> Wonderful. Well, there are a few things you've never seen or you rarely see. Uh, one, you've never seen a leprechaun. Uh, two, you've never seen a Georgia fan that does not think this is the year. <laughs> and you've never seen a 15-minute message by Richie Miller. All right. So, uh, there are some things that are just kind of exist only in, ma- only in our minds, and we're going to see if I can do this 15 minutes, because we've got some other things to do uh, afterwards here. So I've got 11.05, all right? So we're going to see, uh, and we'll take bets, and you just put it in the offering, okay? So, well, today I want to talk to you about, for just a few minutes, about how to have a faith that is greater than your problems. Now, it really is not a test of your faith if everything is going okay. Plenty of money in the bank. Everything's good with all the relationships. All is good in the neighborhood. You know what I mean? That doesn't require a lot of faith, does it? But it's when we have problems, just like a six-month worldwide pandemic. Some of you have lost jobs or at least lost some wages. Uh, Some of you know family members or friends that have had the COVID-19. And so what do you do to have a faith that is greater than your problems. I mean, when I think about what the Scripture teaches us and all the stories that are in the Bible that show us how to have this strong kind of faith. I think, for example, Moses. Now, what an incredible story. It was a beautiful victory that God had given the nation of Israel. They had been enslaved for over 400 years in Egypt. God sent the plagues, you know the story, and Pharaoh finally relented to what Moses said when he said, let my people go. And so he finally did, and of course, it didn't take him long before he changed his mind. How many of you know that often right after a great victory comes a great temptation or a a great test of your faith? And so they had this great victory. They marched out of uh, the land of Egypt. Uh, God had provided for them uh, financially in a miraculous way. It was a, it was a total salvation miracle. And all of a sudden, Pharaoh's army was right behind them. They had the Red Sea in front of them. They had mountains on both sides of them. They could not go anywhere. Some estimate up to 3 million people, Jewish people, that had been let go. And there they were with Pharaoh's army behind them. What do you do to have a faith that is greater than your problems? I don't know about you, but I would say that would be uh, the very definition of a problem, wouldn't you? I mean, being right there in the middle of the wilderness, about to have your life snuffed out. And of course, God told him to wait, to be patient, to see the salvation of the Lord. And God told Moses to raise that staff, and he did. And the Red Sea parted, and they marched across on dry ground. Here's what I'm going to tell you. You're going to face problems. And the the key to your Christian life, the key to your sustainability, the key to your keeping on, keeping on, the key to your passing the torch to your children, the key to leaving a legacy for Jesus Christ in your life is having a faith that is greater than the problem you're facing right now. Now, I got to be honest, we all face different levels of problems. There are some problems you're facing right now that I'm not facing. There are some problems that I'm facing right now that you're not facing, most likely. And so what we must do is find how to tap into that faith, what God says about having a faith that will be greater than your problems. Let me begin reading. I'm going to read two passages out of the book of Hebrews. And I believe these passages show us that there are really two different ways to handle our problems. We can either trust our doubts or we can trust our faith. You can trust your doubts or you can trust your faith. Isn't it easy to trust your doubts? Things are going great and then all of a sudden one little problem comes along and like you throw your hands up like, oh my goodness, here's the end of everything. I knew it was going to happen this way. It's easy to trust your doubts, but why not trust your faith? God is greater than your problem. Well, let me read these two passages, passages today. Hebrews eleven six. 6, and without faith, it is impossible. Everybody say impossible. Say it like you mean it, impossible. It is not unlikely, it's not difficult, it's not a little harder to please God without faith. It is impossible. 
please God without faith. Do you get that? God says we cannot please him apart from faith. And he says, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. He's talking about here our vision of God. What we see about God. You've heard me say many times what you believe about God is the most important thing about you. Well, in Hebrews chapter 11, we call that the chapter of faith. And it talks about some of the great heroes of the faith from the Old Testament days and, and their faith. And then it goes in the end of the chapter, it has something very important. Because you're going to see in chapter 12, where we're going to read next, verse 1, it says, Therefore, therefore, anytime you see that word, you need to find out what it's there for. There was something that was said very important right in front of that. And in essence, and I won't go into detail on it, but in essence it said that they did not receive the promise. All these people, they, they believed God, but they didn't receive the promise. Now, what in the world does that mean? First time I read that, the first several times I read that, I was like, what in the world, God? You promised these people a promise, you didn't give it to them. Well, that's, it's not suggesting that, that God did not answer their prayer or save them or, or anything like that, or that they didn't have a relationship with God. The promise was that Jesus Christ was the Messiah and that he was coming, and Jesus had not come yet. That's all that means. So they were not made perfect without us, which means that Jesus is the key. And the way they were saved in those days, they looked forward to the Messiah. They didn't know Jesus they didn't know the name Jesus, but they knew a Messiah was coming, and so they looked forward in faith. And what do we do? We look back in faith because Jesus has already completed everything that was necessary for our salvation. So he says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, and by the way, don't let that throw you off. That does not mean that there are people up in heaven staring down at you while you're taking a shower. The first few times I read that, I was like, man, that's creepy. They're watching me when I go to the bathroom, all right? I, I, don't, I don't want that. Well, I'm not sure that that means that they're looking down on us from heaven. I mean, Jesus is there. All the glories of heaven are there. I'm not sure they're going to be interested in what I'm doing at lunch, okay? But this cloud of witnesses refers to these people that witnessed with their faith how great God is. And so he said this is an encouragement. It's stories for us he says, they had so great a cloud of witnesses, but let us lay aside every weight and sin which uh, clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. You can't run my race, and I can't run yours, but you must run the one that's set before you. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God, consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. How do you build a faith that is greater than your problems? Well, first of all, uh, you need to get a bigger picture of God. We already talked about that uh, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. What you believe about God is the most important thing about you. How you see God will determine how you live. It will determine the level of your faith. If you see God as this evil, wicked, upset, grumpy old guy in the sky that's waiting to blap you upside the head every chance he gets, that made up a list of rules so that you would be unhappy all of your life, boy, you've missed the point of who God is. This great, loving, heavenly Father. So if you want to have the kind of faith that is necessary to survive your problems, you've got to get a bigger picture of God. In other words... Doubt your doubts, trust your faith. Think that God is bigger than your problems. Do we believe that God is bigger than our problems? Can I get an amen here today? He's bigger than our problems. You know what, it's easy to say that at church. It's a little different to practice it when you're outside of church. When you're working on something that skins your knuckles for the 14th time and you're trying not to curse for the 14th time, where's your faith? Where's your faith? Get a bigger picture of who God is. Number two, surround yourself with faith builders. He says there um, that there were these witnesses for us. And even though they didn't know who Jesus was, we know who Jesus is. And together we are found uh, in Christ. And so if you want to have a great faith, you've got to surround your, 
itself with faith builders. In other words, with people, this cloud of witnesses. You, you read their stories and understand that their stories are given to you to encourage you, to warn you, to direct you. And you surround yourself with people. You surround yourself with faith builders like people in your small group or in your ministry team or at church or uh, Christian friends that you have. People that are going to uplift you, not tear you down. The Bible is very clear that you and I must surround ourselves with these kind of people. If you want to build your faith, number three, you've got to equip yourself with the right tools. He said, let us lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. We've got to lay aside every weight. And I've said this before, not every weight is a sin. He, he talks about sin there in that verse, but sometimes he says, lay aside the weight, which is not a sin. Maybe your weight is a schedule that's so packed, you have no discipline in your life to say no to anything, and as a result, your relationship with God or your relationship with your family gets harmed. That's a weight. Maybe it's something that takes up so much of your time, not a bad thing, but maybe it's a thing that you need to be disciplined on. He said, lay aside the weights, the things that are going to distract us and discourage us, and let us run with endurance. The word lay aside means to rid yourself, like an athlete that will rid himself of anything that's going to hinder his race. You need to learn to simplify your life, and um, you need to learn how to live becoming grace conscious rather than sin conscious. You want to lay aside the sins? Be grace conscious, not sin conscious. Number four, you got to embrace the process. He said, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Many people don't realize the Christian life is a process. The Bible says in Proverbs, if a righteous man falls, he can fall seven times, but he rises yet again. You see, God knows that failure is not permanent unless you allow it to be, unless you wallow in the defeat. When you get up, and you keep on going. Yes, you're going to fail. Yes, you're going to sin. You need to confess that sin. Come back to God. Ask Him to help you repent, to agree with Him, to walk in His way. But the fact is, righteousness and growing in faith is a lifelong process. He says, let us run with endurance. There are some, let me rephrase that, every one of us faces difficulties in our relationship with God. It's spiritual growth. It can either be reading the Bible or praying consistently. It could be a, a list of things. But don't think for a moment that no other Christian struggles like you do, because they do. And what God wants us to do is run with endurance to understand that spiritual growth is a process. And then finally, we've got to learn to focus on Jesus every day. I love what he said there. He said, looking to Jesus the author or founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. And it, then it says in the next sentence, consider him. So two things, looking to Jesus. God wants you to look to him. Look to Jesus. It means to turn your eyes away from something else and focus on that one thing. You know what would help you know that your faith is greater than your problems? This focusing on Jesus, looking to Jesus, you know what he means? Take your eyes off your problems and put them on Jesus. Take your eyes off of that which tempts you. Take your eyes on, off of that which is a problem for you. Take your eyes off of that which causes failure in your life and put your eyes on Jesus. He said, if you'll do that, you're going to run the race and you're going to finish it and you're going to bring glory to God with your life. But then he says, consider him. The word consider means to reason with careful deliberation. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that you need to think about what you're doing. That a part of this spiritual walk is thinking. Thinking through what you're doing before you do it. Well, what God wants us to learn to do is to have a faith that is greater than our problems. You can. You don't have to trust your problems, but you can trust in God. Get your eyes off the problem and get your eyes on Jesus. And God promised that if we would do that, 
that he would answer our prayers and give us the faith that is going to help us. 14 minutes and 58 seconds. Now I want to pray with you and then we're going to transition to another part of the service that we want you to participate in. But today, maybe there's some of you that would say, Pastor, there is a, there's a problem that I'm having right now. Maybe somebody knows about it. Maybe they don't. But you'd say, I've got a problem. And, and, and by admitting that you got, have a problem, look, we say Avalon Church is the perfect place for imperfect people. There are no perfect people here. Nobody here. If you think that you come in and you think that other people think you're perfect, you're wrong. They know you're not perfect. So might as well just be yourself, okay? And, and here's the thing. You've got problems. I've got problems. The question is, how are we going to deal with them? How many would say, Pastor, I need a greater faith. I need my faith to be stronger for some of the problems that I'm facing right now. And I'm not bowing heads or closing eyes or pretending that nobody else in this world has a problem. But if you're in that category, would you raise your hand? I got my hand raised. Well, let's pray about that. Heavenly Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you'd help our church and those that have joined us online that are a part of our church online. God, that we would all consider Jesus. We would look to Jesus, take our eyes off of our problems and put them on you. God, give us that kind of faith. And Lord, for those in our congregation today, some are facing financial challenges or health challenges or job or family-related challenges. I'm not sure what it is. Some are facing temptation that they need help. They need strength to overcome that which tempts them. And God, I pray that you'd bless them. Increase our faith individually, corporately as a church. God, we want you to know that we love you. Of course, in Jesus' name that we pray. Now, I'm going to pray a second time. You can look right this way. And I'm going to pray for those that need to be saved. You know, we do this every Sunday at Avalon Church. We believe that we exist to bring people into a growing relationship with Christ. And so today, there may be somebody that is joining us online or in our congregation that you are not sure of your relationship with God. Maybe you have based all of your relationship on God on your goodness, on how good you are. And I've got bad news for you if that's what you're doing, which is what most people do. That's not going to work. Jesus said you can never be good enough. How can you go to the God of the universe and talk about how good or righteous you are? Well, it's impossible. However, Jesus made a way for you to know him and to go to heaven when you die and to have a radical life change, a radical relationship with Jesus Christ. God promised that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And I'm going to invite you today. If you're in our congregation and you want to receive Christ as your Savior today, I want to invite you to follow this little simple prayer that I'm going to pray. And understand, it's not just repeating words, but it's praying this from your heart that makes a difference. And for those of you online, I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer with me as well and trust Jesus as your Savior if you need to do that today. Pray something like this. Dear Jesus, I know you're the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. And I'm asking you right now to save me. I believe you resurrected from the grave and that you are the God of the universe. And Lord, I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. Change me forever and make me new. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to encourage those of you online, if you would, to click that you prayed to receive Christ today so that we can rejoice with you and help you in your next step. If there's anyone in our congregation today that prayed to receive Christ today, we want you to know that we're very glad for you. We're very happy. In fact, let's give them a hand for those that did that today. And what we would ask of you is that you'd fill out the next step card and drop it in the box on the way out today. That way we can contact you and uh, let you know how happy we are for you and how we can assist you in your brand new walk with Christ. Well, today we're going to transition uh, to something that um, the elders and I have been talking about. We've been actually discussing this for some time. Uh, for those of you that have been coming here for very long, you know that I've had, for the last year and a half, I've had some kind of problem. I don't know what, well, everybody knows I have problems. So I'm talking about physical problem, all right? So, uh, but uh, 
I thought I had shingles at first, and they said I might have had shingles in an internal case. And I'm not going to give you all the details, but I've been to, I've been to two doctors at my primary uh, care place. I've been to an internal medicine doctor. I've been to um, a dermatologist. I've been to a neurologist. I've been to uh, two, two doctors at uh, this pain management clinic, and I've been to two chiropractors, okay? So I've been to a few doctors. I've had uh, three MRIs. I've had x-rays. I've had ultrasound. Is that what you call it? Uh, uh, ultrasound. I know women get that. I'm not sure what the ones. They, were, they didn't find a baby, I'll tell you that, okay? Um, but what has happened is they were not really sure and still are not completely sure what's wrong with me. Um, the consensus is from about three of the nine doctors I've been to is that uh, I have uh, neuropathy from type 2 diabetes. Uh, those of you that know, I have been a di type 2 diabetic for probably 10 or, 10 or 12 years. And um, so the prognosis is at this point, the latest thing uh, that they've told me is that probably if I get my blood sugar down lower than it is and keep it there for a while, that most likely this will get better. What has happened is I have also injured my back somehow or another, and that's why I'm limping so bad. Um, but I also talked to one doctor, and there's a type of neuropathy that does attack your muscles when you're going through this and makes it feel like that you're numb and weak, and that's exactly how I feel when I walk. That's why I look like uh, a thousand year old man when I'm walking around. So um, now with this said, to my knowledge, and I say this to those of you watching online because you know how things can uh, get out of hand. To my knowledge, I do not have any life-threatening disease. I've had all these MRIs. I've not been diagnosed with cancer. I've not been diagnosed with any other disease. I, as far as I know, uh, all I'm dealing with is this neuropathy and whatever it is going on in my back. Okay. Now, the, the reason that I'm doing what I'm doing today is I want you to pray for me. I want you to join in not just praying occasionally, but seriously as a church, praying about this. Because here's what I know. I believe God wants to increase our faith. If, if God can use this to increase our faith and then increase our faith as we go to the next level, make the next move, build the next building, whatever it is that we do, then it'll be worth it. Okay, um, And so, anyway, the bottom line is my physical condition, because of all the medicine that I'm on right now, it, it causes me to be dizzy. It causes me to be very groggy and really difficult for me to concentrate and, and so on and so forth. So you've heard me say many times, my goal is to pastor this church for 40 years. If I continue like this, I don't know that I can pastor it for 40 more weeks, much less you know, uh, for 40, not 40 more years, but for a total of 40 years. Um, and so the elders and I, we met and the elders have asked that I take some time off so that I can focus on getting better, do nothing but what the doctor says. I'm probably going to change some diet. I've lost like 25 pounds since this whole thing started. I'll probably lose another 20 pounds or so, hopefully. I want you to pray with me about that because they're saying that if I get my weight down. I weigh 204 pounds right now. And if I get down to about 185 or so, they think that maybe I'll get off all the medication and everything. So, so that said, um, we are very confident in our team here at Avalon Church. We have an incredible staff. I love them dearly. I think they do a fantastic job. I trust them completely. And I have total confidence that during this time, that they're going to continue on and everything's going to go. Here's what I need you to do. Number one, I need you to pray for me. Number two, I need you to stay faithful. Stay faithful in coming to church. Stay faithful in, in uh, watching online. Stay faithful in giving. Stay faithful in serving. Be here. Stay faithful. Because it's only going to be a short, I'm taking a short time off so that I can have a long-term uh, pastorate here uh, at Avalon Church. I've already been pastor for 19 years. Plan on doing it 21 more if God is willing. Okay? Now, once again, the only way I'm going to be able to do that is to get better. And so uh, the elders have told me that I need to take, begin, to begin with, to take a month off 
and our staff will preach and do all the stuff. You may or may not see me here. Most likely I won't be here because it's almost impossible for me to come without doing something. And so I may come once or twice. And at the end of that month, we're going to reassess it, okay? If I need to go a little bit longer, I will at that time. Uh, but for now, we're planning on a month. So I'm going to take a month off. Um, and, um, you know, I've always heard that uh, cigars and scotch are great healers. So for the next month, if I can just do that, I'm kidding, folks. I'm kidding. Okay, okay. Yeah, some of you are like, well, yeah, I agree with you, Pastor. <laughs> but... Um, I hope you will pray for me on this, okay? I'm going to ask uh, Justin to come out and uh, some of our elders that are here to come on up, and they're going to pray over me, and I'm going to ask you to join with us during this time. Justin, you go ahead and take it from here. Um, I, I want to... I want us to do a couple things um, in this time. So we're going to have a moment of prayer. We're going to pray for Pastor Richie. Scripture teaches us that um, if you are sick, if you have a need, come to the elders, let them lay hands on you, um, and, and see it healed, um, see it done. So the first thing that I want to see us do as a church, we're going to lay hands on Pastor Richie. We're going to pray for him. Um, everybody here, reach your hands out. Reach your hands out um, so that you can also say, yes, I am faith. I am praying this with you. If you're at home, if you're joining us online, do the same thing. Reach out. Um, join us in faith as we pray for Pastor Richie. The second thing, at the end, we say amen. We say amen. That means, yes, let it be done. I agree wholeheartedly that I want to see this done. All right, so when we get done praying, let's all shout. Let's say amen. Let's lift our voices up so that uh, th we can not only have faith that we'll see healing and breakthrough in Pastor Richie as well as in our church, um, but we also affirm it and we agree that we want that to happen. Um, so a few of us up here are going to pray. Um, just lift your hands up and agree with us uh, in amen. Father, Lord, we just come before you now, Lord. You say we're two or more gathered. You're with us, Lord. We ask you to fill this place. Lord, put your healing hands on Pastor Richie, Lord. We know you are the Father who heals, Lord. We know you have a purpose and a plan in this, Lord. We ask that you move. You work in Richie. You bring complete and total healing to him, Lord. And you move in this church, Lord. Let this be a testimony of your power and might and your plan, Lord. Lord, we bring this to your throne. We, we come to you open-handed, Lord, ready to receive what you're bringing this season to, Lord. Lord, we love you, and we give Pastor Richie into your hands. Father God, we come to you not in fear and worry, but Lord, we come to you in hope and comfort in knowing that you are in control. No matter what, Lord, you are in control. And then when you're in control, your will will be done. We don't always understand that, but we don't understand the why. But Lord, we know that in the end, it's going to be your love that's going to come through. So Father, we ask you to, to shower Pastor Richie, Lord, with healing. Lord, we know you are Jehovah Rapha, God of healing. Father, we just ask you to put that on him. But Father, we also pray for the church staff, Lord, that while, while Pastor Richie is, is away and healing and getting strong that this church staff that you empower them that you give them the wisdom and the strength Lord to carry on the vision of this church the vision that, that Pastor Richie has laid out and Father we just we just hope that as we go out and we bring people in wherever they are Lord that we bring them to you and Father we just ask that you you give this church a burden for the lost souls, Lord, that you you allow this church to reach out and bring them in. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you that we can um, come here, Lord, and, 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 
and just pray, Lord. We can talk to you. We can simply come and petition you, Lord, for breakthrough and for healing right now, Lord. Thank you that we have that ability, that freedom through Jesus to do that. Lord, I pray that you work miraculously. Lord, I pray that you are the God who heals, that you are Jehovah Rapha in Pastor Richie's life right now. Lord, right this second, not, not later. Lord, we pray for miraculous healing. Lord, um, however you do that, Lord, whether you do it right now, Lord, or whether you work through doctors, Lord, whatever you do, however you do it, Lord, it'll be perfect. Lord, it'll be perfect. Lord, I pray for that healing. I pray for that breakthrough. Lord, I pray that you show your power and your might and your glory through this situation, Lord, not only to Pastor Richie, not only to um, our staff and elders, Lord, to our church, Lord, to our community, Lord, that, um, that moving forward, that, uh, Lord, your glory can be known, Lord, your healing power can be known, Lord, that, um, what it says in Isaiah, Lord, that that can be known, that, that you were pierced for our transgressions, Lord, you were crushed for our iniquities, Lord, but you bore our, our sins, Lord, you bore our pain, Lord, you bore our sickness on the cross, and you paid it in full, Lord, you paid it in full, Lord, I pray that that truth is known and believed and seen through this uh, time that we're moving into, Lord, through Pastor Richie's life. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for who you are. Lord, I thank you for what you're done. And I thank you, Lord, ahead of time right now for the healing that you're going to bring, for the breakthrough that you're going to bring. Lord, I thank you for that right now. It is in Jesus Christ's holy, healing, and precious name that I pray, Lord. Amen. Amen, Amen church. Amen. I want to, I want to ask our elders and staff to stand down the front here. We're going to have a song. You guys go ahead and stand down here on the floor. Um, if today you need healing, it may be just as simple as you've got a cold or you don't feel very well. It could be that you have uh, a disease that you need healing for. Maybe you've got a doctor's report coming up and you're not sure what it's going to be. It could be for anything, but the Bible tells us that with His stripes we are healed. And if you don't think that means our physical healing, read the book of Matthew chapter 4 and chapter 8. And it talks about how that Jesus did this to fulfill the prophecy from Isaiah. And so what I'm going to invite you to do during this song, if you like prayer, it could be emotional healing. It could be uh, any kind of healing. You feel free to come and pray with uh, one of these folks here at the front, elders or staff, and uh, they will pray with you and ask God to help you uh, during this time. I want you to know that I love you. I thank God for you, all of those of you here, all of those of you watching online. It has been the, uh, the privilege of my career, the privilege of my adult life, uh, besides my relationship with Christ and my family, uh, this has been the greatest privilege I've ever had of being able to pastor this church, and I love you. And um, I'm going to love you for a long, long time. And so I hope that you will be here and uh, be a part of what's going on uh, over the next few weeks. And I believe God's going to do a great, great work in your life. Thanks for joining us at Avalon Church. Share this message with a friend and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single video. You can also join us every Sunday live on the Avalon Church Facebook page. If you feel led to give and support our mission of bringing people wherever they are into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ, you can do so by clicking the Give button. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time.